P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post. The serials you like the most brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double up bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Say, do you ever complain about having the same old breakfast day after day? (laughs) Well, you don't need to, buckaroos. Just have Mom keep a supply of post cereals on the shelf. Then you can choose the breakfast you want any time you want it. You can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. Well, sir, Dale and Jonah and I are on our way to Panhandle Hollow. The sheriff sent word that he's trapped Herb Selby in a cabin out there. Better come out, Selby. I'm still here. Ah, hoping I got you. All right, I'm giving up. My ammunition's gone. Hands over your head, then. No tricks. Come on. You ought to get a big reward for this, lawman. Hey, why don't you make up some big story about the fight you had to take me? I'll sing along with you. Make it as big as you like. Huh. Look better for you than saying the only reason you got me was because I run out of ammunition. Oh, uh, look, bro, oh, oh, boy. Just in time, Roy, Dale. Lower your hands, Selby. Let's see how these fit your wrist. Well, that ain't Trigger and his friends. Come out to escort me to jail, did you, Rogers? No, but it's a pleasure I won't turn down. Then you better rope me to my horse and rope my horse to yours or I'll bust loose on the way. Just like I'm going to bust out of that cracker box jail you got in Mineral City. You sure talk big. And why not? I got loot hidden all over this territory. And I won't sit in jail and let it rot. We'll ride in with you, Sheriff. I don't like the way this hombre's acting. And even that's a pretty good chunk of loot, ain't it? But I got still more hidden out. I got $1,400 last night. I held up Glenn DeBona. And the sheriff's been chasing me ever since. Now, could I have... Glenn DeBona? You're talking through your hat. If Glenn had been held up, he'd have reported it to my office. And no reporters come in. Let's go, Roy. I don't think you realize what you're letting yourself in for, Selby. The more crimes you confess, the longer your sentence will have to be. Except I'm not going to serve any sentence. I'm going to break out of here in a couple of days. Ah, he's just a smart aleck kid. But a bad hombre all the same. All right, you want to bet on it? You want to bet on it? I won't break out? Sheriff, let's get the bone over here and ask him if he was robbed. We've got to find out how much Selby's talk is truth and how much he lies. Go right ahead. While we're waiting for him, I'll slip over to the bank. Some counterfeit money showed up there, and I want to get a report ready for the federal authorities. Okay, Sheriff, I'll call him. Make yourselves comfortable in the office. We will, thanks. Oh, I tell you, Roy, that blow the bugle here I come attitude of his is getting to be more than I can stand. Uh, You wait here. I'll call Glenn. Sure, Roy. Now, Jonah, you give the sheriff his dues. He's going there to try and float a loan so he can get Dorothy May another present. (laughs) But presents ain't going to do that polecat no good now. Not after last night. What happened last night? (sighs) Well, he had a date with Dorothy May and didn't show up. Well, she'll understand if a man's business keeps him from getting... Oh, no, it weren't business that kept him away. No, sure. You see, I happened to pass by the sheriff's right after supper, and I seen him through the window. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Cleaning spots off his celluloid collar with a piece of hard gum eraser. Cheapskate. I knowed right away what he was up to, so I got Caroline Seplow to phone and say that she was a friend of Dorothy May's, and that Dorothy May was indisposed, and so would he not come over why, Jonah Wilde. <laughs> his goose is cooked. Dorothy May sat there all evening with nothing to do. <laughs> nothing to do but watch the clock and tap her foot. Well, Glenn will be here in a few minutes. 
He seemed a little upset when I said we were at the sheriff's office. He's probably on edge after working at the Mitchell Ranch all year and trying to help his sister keep the bakery going, too. This is the first week he hasn't had two jobs, remember. No, Glenn didn't sound just edgy. There was fear in his voice, too. Well, he'll soon be here. We can find out then if anything is wrong. While Roy, Deal, and Jonah wait, a thin, nervous figure walks hurriedly toward the office. Glenn DeBona. His hands are in his pockets. His head keeps twitching from side to side as though he expected someone might be trying to slip up behind him. He approaches the door. His face becomes set in strained lines. He enters and faces Roy, Dale, and Jonah. Oh, howdy, Glenn. Sorry if we took you away hey, from... Hey, what is all this? What is all this? Where's the sheriff? You said on the phone he was looking for me. Well, the sheriff had to go to the bank. All we wanted was to ask whether or not you were held up last night. No, no, I wasn't. You weren't? I just said I wasn't. All right, don't be flying off the handle. Well, I... Uh, take it easy, Glenn. The sheriff caught Herb Selby, and Selby's been confessing to every crime that's been committed around here for the last six months. Among other things... He said he held you up last night. Well, if he said that, he's lying. I went out to Mitchell's ranch yesterday afternoon. Jim Mitchell was keeping money for me that I'd saved while I was working for him. And I brought that money back last night, right here, every penny of it. I used it this morning to pay what Sis and I owed on the bakery. Okay, that's all right. Well, if you want proof, you can go and ask her. I told you... Glenn, we're not fighting you. Well, we just figured if you were held up, you'd want to sign a complaint against Selby and we... Well, I don't. And I got better use for my time than hanging around a sheriff's office. Bakery needs all my attention. You're not as big a public enemy as we thought, Herb. Just a big bag of wind. All the holdups you told us about are probably brags. If you want us to believe you're such a clever fella, you should offer some kind of proof. Huh. Okay, I don't need that 1400 I took from the bone. That's chicken feed. So I'll tell you where it is. That'll sure help. You know the cabin where the sheriff took me? Yeah. Well, there's a pine tree about 10 feet from the south corner. The money is at the base of the tree on the side next to the cabin. We'll have a look. I'll probably be gone before you get back. But anyway, you'll know I back up my claims. I doubt you'll be gone, Selby. I think you'll be right where you are for a long, long time. At the base of the pine tree, Roy, Dale, and Jonah find a spot where the ground is packed less solidly than the rest. They dig down. Roy's shovel strikes something soft. He stops digging, reaches into the hole. A leather pouch. Yeah, and it's filled with something, too. Money. Convolution. There's some initials on it. J.M., but Glenn's initials well, are... J.M. stands for Jim Mitchell. Jim must have loaned the pouch to Glenn. Want me to count the money, Roy? Yeah, go ahead. Jonah, something's mighty wrong here. We'll have to check deeper into what's happened. Why, that Glenn DeBoner's been lying like a goat. Jonah, I know you don't like to be around the sheriff any more than you have to. He's a polecat. But while Dale and I ride in and turn this money over to him, you hightail it to Eddie Robertson's place. He's held a mortgage on the bakery and... Find out if Glenn's paid off, but don't let him know anything is in the wind. There's $1,400 here, exactly. That's it, then. Come on. You and I'll ride in and hand it over to the sheriff. Jonah has something else to do. I don't understand this, Roy. I don't understand it at all. It's a mystery to us, too. Glenn can't get his money back unless he admits it's stolen, can he? Well, howdy, Jim. Hello, Mr. Mitchell. Afternoon, Jim. Howdy. I understand you people have been trying to give Glenn DeBona a bad time. Well, that's hardly true. News travels fast, doesn't it, Jim? I rode in to be a character witness for Glenn. He worked for me for a year with one of the best hands I ever had. Did his work well, no carousing or gambling, and he saved his money. Yeah, we understand he did. He earned $1,200 while he was here and saved over a 1000 of it. Fact is, last night he came and took what he saved. A thousand seventeen dollars. A thousand seventeen? Nobody's is... accused Glenn of anything, Jim. Herb Selby claimed to have yeah, held him. Nobody'd up. better accuse him of anything either. Glenn's a good man. I'll back him to the hill. Well, no hard feelings, I hope. No, I just dropped in to give Glenn a reference. Hmm. What do you make of that, Roy? Hey, Roy! Oh, Roy! What? 
Roy, can, can I have the rest of the day off? I'm, I'm, I'm going to write another chapter in my book titled, Honesty is the Best Policy. I'm inspired, Roy. I am. Where did you get all that money, Jonah? Rob somebody. Oh, nothing like this has ever happened before. I was on my way to see Eddie Robertson, and I was hungry, because he didn't have no dinner this noon, you see. He lost his mind. Well, Glenn's bakery wagon was in front of the livery stable, but Glenn wasn't nowhere around, so I left 20 cents and took a loaf of bread. Always was, right on the edge. Well, sir, I went to eat some. Oh, hush. And a great big roll of $10 bills was inside of the loaf. And this proved that honesty is the best policy. For 20 cents, I got a loaf of bread and a roll of beans. Wait a minute, Jonah. Uh, eh? Sheriff, Glenn seems to have more money than a man in his position can rightfully account for. I think we'd better check up on him for keeps this time. Say, it's easy to blaze the trail to a better day. Just start off with a rip-snorting breakfast built around new, improved post-toasties. Fresh, crisp flakes of corn, rich with sweet kernel flavor. Yippee! What a feast! Post-toasties beep good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post-toasties heap good corn flakes. And, Mom, if there's a pale face at your house who hasn't an appetite for breakfast, try setting a big bowl full of Post Toasties at his place and watch him eat hearty. Remember, Post Toasties with sugar and cream are heap good and heap good nourishment, too, for rockin' horse cowboys or big braves. So be a good scout, Mom. Dish up Post Toasties, the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. Finding a roll of ten dollar bills and a loaf of bread is the last in a series of incidents that make Glenn DeBona a man of mystery. Until a few days ago, Glenn worked as a ranch hand and saved his money to pay off a mortgage on the bakery operated by himself and his sister. He claims to have paid this mortgage, yet an outlaw has proven that he took Glenn's money before the payment was made. In addition, Jonah discovered another roll of $10 bills. Yeah, all this talk about inflation is just so much eyewash. I say, it's just so much eyewash. Did you ever hear of a bigger bargain than I got? A loaf of bread and a roll of $10 bills for 20 cents? Are you all through now, Order? Through what? Jabbering, Roy. is trying to shake something. Oh, convolution. Well, excuse me, Roy. Well, I'm trying to find out whether or not you ask Eddie Robertson about Glenn paying off the mortgage. Well, certainly, I say. My doggies, I didn't. This windfall come to me and I clean forgot it. I'll go, Roy. Well, maybe Dale should, Sheriff. Uh, we don't want it to look official yet. I'll take care of it. You better stay right here. And be ready for trouble, Sheriff. Jonah and I will go on over to the bakery and have another talk with Glenn. No, Glenn isn't here. Haven't seen him since morning. You know where we can get in touch with him, Gene? It's hard to say. My brother's not one to tell his business. Anything I can do for you? Well, we were just wondering if there was any profit in bread at 20 cents a loaf, the way you bake it. <laughs> well, not much, I can tell you. Oh, I wouldn't think so. Here, Jean, uh, we found this in a loaf of bread Jonah took off your You writing. get out of here with that money. It ain't ours, or you take it away. Howdy, miss. I'd like to... Oh, excuse me. I didn't see you was waiting on somebody else. They're just leaving. Oh. Well, I'd like a loaf of bread. Mr. Mitchell, uh, Jim Mitchell, said this is the place to get it. We ain't got any. We're all out, for the time being. Uh, there's some in the showcase, miss. That's yesterday's bacon. I don't pawn off yesterday's stuff on somebody Mr. Mitchell sends in. And you, you come back later. Kind you want will be out of the oven soon. Well, we may as well be going too, Jonah. You're sure this uh, money doesn't belong to Glenn? You keep that money out of sight and don't be showing it around here. Well, the only thing I can do then, Gene, is to turn it over to the sheriff. You turn it over to anybody you please. But don't be coming around here saying it's ours, because it isn't. Okay, whatever you say. I hope you won't regret this, Gene. Y'all, there's more money in this town than nobody wants. When somebody turns down money, Jonah, 
They usually have a pretty good reason. Yep. Hey, that's shooting. It's coming from the sheriff's office. Let's let's, let's get down there. Uh, he, he did just what he said he would. He, he got away. Herb Selby. Convolution. I went into a cell. One of the few more details on this holdup of Glenn DeBona. He had a hidden gun. I don't even know where he was carrying it. He hit me on the temple with it. Shot the lock off the cell door and ran. Just wait till Dorothy May hears about this. He made good his boast. All right, we'll bring him back and fix him so he won't get away again. Roy, I talked to Eddie Robertson. What's wrong? Selby escaped. What about Eddie? Oh, well, he said Glenn paid off the mortgage the first thing this morning. Somebody around here is lying. Okay. We'll find out later. Where's Bullet? Over at the Eureka. Let's get him and trail Selby. Selby's the man we want to see first. With unerring instinct, Bullet darts ahead of Roy, Dale, Jonah, and the sheriff, picking out Selby's trail. He's traveling in the direction of the hideout cabin. Selby must be returning there, intending to dig up the rest of his loot and flee the county. Roy urges Trigger on. Bullet! Here, fella! Come here, Bullet! What's the matter, Roy? I want Bullet close to us. Oh, 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 Selby's gone to the hideout cabin to get the loot before he gets out of the territory. That's it, all right. Let's see if we can ride up quiet so he doesn't get scared and run away. He must be inside the cabin. There's his horse. <laughs> quiet, Bullet, quiet. Yeah. Better keep him undercover. This man's pretty handy with a gun. I'll watch myself. Oh, why are you saying that, Tin Star? Just because he slapped your head with a gun? Oh, sorry. Yeah, personal. I think you're giving too much credit to him and not enough to your big head. Jonah. It's hard not to hit that thing. Cut it. This is no time for wrangling. You two cover the sides of the cabin. I'll see if I can get up to the door. Quickly, but with caution, Roy moves toward the front door of the cabin while Jonah and the sheriff go to the sides. Roy is within ten feet of the door now. No cover is between himself and the cabin. He races across the ground, bending low, gun ready. He reaches the cabin, presses back hard against the wall. The door is to his right, a window to his left. He listens. There is no indication that anyone is inside. He reaches out with his boot, kicks the door open. Shots from inside. Roy ducks back against the wall. Don't try to come in, Rogers, or I'll kill you. Herb Selby. Roy edges over, points his gun through the doorway. Another shot from inside. Roy ducks back again. All right, Selby, if that's the way you want it. Roy turns quickly, pokes his gun through the window. Terror-stricken, Selby runs. Roy! Roy! He's out the back window! Bullet! Bullet! There, fella, take him! Go get him! Bullet! On guard, fella. That's enough. Take wow. it easy. Boy, Bullet wasn't fooling. Stand quiet now, boy. You got your cuffs, Sheriff? Right here. Oh, yeah. He always got his cuffs and things like that. Just he can't keep his big head from being bopped by a gun. I'll talk to you later, author. I'll make it the next time, Rogers. No need to come this way next time, Selby. The loot's all dug up. We'll just take it back with us now, eh, Roy? Yeah, well, you thought I was heading out of the territory right away, didn't you? Well, I wasn't. Not until tomorrow. Now, this Glenn DeBona claimed I didn't hold him up last night, so... Well, I thought I'd get him tonight, but good. So let me take a look at this. This the money you took from him? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Leather pouch and all. Fourteen hundred dollars. But he left Mitchell's ranch with a thousand seventeen. Sheriff, you haven't had a good look at this money yet, have you? I started to count it back at the office, but we were interrupted. Most of it's all right. But here's a couple hundred and tens, but... What do you think of these? Oh, I see. Why, this one is of the same series as the counterfeit that showed up at the bank. Well, the others are the same series, too. Then this couldn't have been the money Glenn was carrying after all. Why not? Well, if it's counterfeit... Well, if it's counterfeit, there's a good chance Glenn's dealing in bad money. Begging it in bread. Convolution. Sheriff, how about letting me borrow your prisoner for the evening? Shall we? Yeah, he may be able to help us get evidence on some counterfeiters. That is, providing you still want to do that one last job, Selby. Anytime, Rogers. 
Nobody is going to claim I didn't rob them when I did. You'll have to take the responsibility for this, Roy, and I won't know anything about it. Well, that suits us. Selby, we'll stay here until dark. If, uh, if you try anything between now and then, you're just another prisoner who tried to escape, understand? He's in the bakery, all right. Here's a gun, Selby. But let me warn you, it's empty, and ours aren't. We're staying right out here behind you. All right. Now, look, Rogers, we've been I just want to make sure you understand. All I want is to take the guy that won't admit I took him. It's a matter of pride with me. Go ahead. But remember, your gun's empty, and we're right behind you. The hold-up man enters the dimly lit bakery. Walks toward the wooden counter between the two glass showcases. Then DeBona glances up. His face grows pale. The hold-up man shows his gun. Uh, I thought you... Uh, I... I want that money. But you... You said I didn't take it last night. So I'm taking it now. Well, there's not much here. Get your hands out of there. I want the big stack. The big stack and all of it. Now, quick or I'll let this talk. Just a minute. Be careful what you pick up. Uh, what you want is in this box... It's money. All right. Bring it over. Here. Take the cover off and let's see. Okay. Look. All right, Selby. Raise your hands. We got you. Don't move. You only think you've got me. Keep your guns on him, Dale and Jonah. I'll have to take this box of money. No. We'll need it as evidence. Keep your hands off that money. Glenn grabs the box of money with one hand, striking out at Roy with the other. Roy steps back, holstering his gun. Glenn comes at him. Roy swings. Glenn is hit, but unhurt. Roy swings again. Then again. Glenn lands a hard blow to Roy's stomach. And Roy retaliates with a drive to Glenn's jaw. Glenn goes down. Keep Selby covered for another minute, Dale and Jonah. I want to have a look at this money in this box. Howdy, pards. Things sure have been jumping at the ranch. And that's just when a feller needs a good supply of energy most. So take an old hand's advice. Tomorrow, when you roll out of your bunk, corral yourself a bowl full of that great energy-giving cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. Why, two minutes after you polish off a bowl full of Grape Nuts Flakes, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. And you get it from Grape Nuts Flakes because their two-minute energy has been tested and proved. And you go for Grape Nuts Flakes Sugar Roasted Flavor. It's plum delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package, you hear? For two-minute energy, what'll we eat? Grape Nuts Flakes, oh boy, they're a treat. Yes, they're two-minute energy, has what it takes. So rise and shine with Grape Nuts Flakes. Selby hasn't a chance in the world of escaping, Roy, and he'll stay that way from now on. Unless your big head gets in his way again. All right. Glenn, let's hear your explanation of how counterfeit money came to be in the box you were given to the hold-up man. And you may as well tell the truth. We know you were distributing it at the bakery. In 20-cent loaves of bread. <laughs> I thought I was rich for a minute. Where were you printing it? At the bakery? No. I didn't know anything about counterfeit until I went out to Jim Mitchell's place to work. I stumbled on the plates out there one day. I made him take me in as a partner. He prints it then. And you sell it to the boys who make a specialty of passing bad money, is that it? Mm, pretty much. Okay. I'll give you a pad of paper and a pencil. While you're not doing anything in your cell, I want you to write out a list of every man you sold the stuff to and where we can find them. Yes. You going out to pick up Jim Mitchell, Sheriff? Right away. Drop over to the cafe on your way back. We'll have a little supper tonight. Uh, I will if I have time, Roy. I'm uh, not sure. If you do have time, we'll, we'll be there anyway. Sure a good meal, Dale. Say, where's Jonah? Still answering his phone call, I guess. No, here he comes. 
must be bad news the way he looks. Hey, what's the matter, Jonah? Yeah, yeah, oh, nothing. Well, <clears throat> you about ready to go back to ranch? Yeah, but I thought you were going to call on Dorothy May tonight. Yeah, well, I was, but <clears throat> now I... <clears throat> man, boy, I don't know. That phone call was from somebody that said she was a friend of Dorothy May's, and she told me that Dorothy May was indisposed, so would I please not come over tonight? Uh-oh. Yeah, sure. Uh-oh. I see what you mean. Say, the same thing happened to the sheriff last night, if I remember right. Uh-huh. Oh, what are you going to do about it? Well, I can't make up my mind, Roy. If somebody's a playing a joke on me and I don't go over, and Dorothy May has to sit there all evening alone watching the clock and tapping her foot, war. And on the other hand, if the phone call ain't a joke and I go barging in and she is indisposed, war. The frying pan on the fire. Yeah, yeah, it's times like this a man don't know his own mind. Say, he don't know his own mind. Whichever way I turn, I'm a heel. <laughs> uh, hey, look out the window passing by. Eh? The sheriff. <clears throat> a dozen roses and a box of candy. <laughs> yeah, see, that... Wait, uh, that polecat's got his face all shined up. And heading straight <laughs> that... towards Dorothy May's house. I'll salivate him. I'll salivate that chucklehead. Yes, sir, it looks as though we'll have a mighty interesting evening. Turnabout's sort of fair play at that, isn't it, Dale? What you got a cooking? How's about cooking something up with me? Hey, sweet baby, don't you think maybe we could find a brand new recipe? I've got a hot rod Ford and a two dollar bill. I know a spot right over the hill Where the soda pop and the dancing's free If you want to have fun, come along with me Hey, good looking What you got a cooking? How's about cooking something up with me? I'll keep it till it's covered with age I'm gonna write your name down on every page Hey, good looking What you got cooking How's about cooking something up with me How's about cooking something up with me That's all for now, folks This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us Goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you See you next week Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials Each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production transcribed. Directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. 
Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Paul Zarimba, Herb Litton, Janet Warren, and Ralph Moody. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails.